think my dad has 54 national team games and my mom has 53 so it's like uh, they have a, a competition in between them there but of course now they're too old to play my dad still play now and then i played basketball in sweden till i was 30 years old then i start uh, coaching and came over to norway 88 as a coach and i stayed here and met Sander's father. We are sports fanatics, obviously, and we've been doing sports ever since the kids uh, came into existence, so to speak. Having that competitive mentality, being uh, having good genes from mom and dad, having good, uh, they've been through the same process, they've been spending a lot of time doing, uh, playing sports. I mean, we've always been playing basketball, uh, competing about that. Outside at the house, we have uh, our own uh, uh, basketball hoop uh, on the garage door. So uh, we've always been shooting against each other, playing against each other in that matter. But we've always done the same thing in, the, in soccer or football, as, as a matter of fact. Every day we were doing both football and basketball. And I think it helped me a lot also today on, in football-wise that I can still move my legs quite properly for being that big, though. <laughs> I think he's naturally a basketball player. He gets mad at me still about that. Because he, he, he chooses to be a football player and that's what he wants to be. This is where it all started. And this is where Sander used to go on his own when he was a little boy. We went here together and we have spent hours and hours and hours right here. This brings back the best memories. <laughs> He was definitely an annoying little brother uh, of early age, and uh, I remember uh, me being eight years older, it's such a big difference, especially in those years. So I, I was always, I remember testing him, beating him, and all that the, the typical stuff, uh, you know, that an older brother would do to a younger brother. I've known uh, Sander since, since we were six years old, uh, so it's been a long time. This is uh, our old primary school. And uh, to the left here, this is our old uh, football pitch or, uh, where we were playing when we were small kids. As you can see here, those two friends as well. We were playing here every day, every single day. When we got the opportunity, we were just playing here. He was a good shooter <laughs> and he was a very good dribbler as well. Uh, I was kind of lucky with the timing because when I was in first grade, this uh, Aske, which is my like hometown club, uh, they started with a football academy and at that stage I was allowed to, I was old enough to go there. So Knut Christoffersen was the guy behind it all. I was the coach on the after school project for Sander Berge. First when he came here, we came up on the pitch and I just looked. Because it was a seven year old guy who handled the ball exceptionally well. He just uh, ran up there with a ball and i never seen anything like it. And the older I become, I got into a team and they were three years older than me actually. Uh, and I got to play with them from I was 11 and they were 14. So I kind of jumped over my, my own age for some years. Uh, that was Ole Petter. My name is Ole Petter Engebretsen. I'm a football coach here in Asker football. And I was uh, Sanders uh, head coach when he was 11 until 13. I uh, talked to Knut Christoffersen, the head coach of the um, after-school football. He came up to me and said, Ole Petter, I have, a, I have a player here, you have to see him. And I saw after a very short time that this is something special. Here we have a special player. Uh, so the club decided that he was moved up from boys 11 to boys 14 and he played with those other guys in the 14th side for three years. He uh, tackled that very well to be an 11-year-old around 14-year-old uh, guys. 
At that time, he, he played as a striker, more uh, number nine or ten role. Not as now when he, in Sheffield United he plays uh, deep or uh, midfielder. Then he scored a lot of goals. I think he had a very good time here in Aske football. And he really he comes back to us and tell it's, it's, it's been very important for him. So that's very nice to hear. A couple of times a year we, we had meetings with the players, uh, one on one. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a meeting with Sander too, of course, in May 2009. And I have, uh, <laughs> I have it here in writing, what we talked about at that time, the summer of 2009. He got a niner on football intelligence. He, he understands the football. He understands the, the way the game is played. He always likes to train, always concentrated and focused in practice, positive, he is a dream player for a coach. My name is Sven Roger Pettersen and I worked with uh, Sander when he was between 13 and 17, I think. And it was uh, kind of obvious that he was a very good player, as everybody told me. So uh, that's the first thing I think about. Uh, he had Barcelona as, uh, as his first uh, uh, favorite team, so, so uh, he liked to just keep the ball in the team, create uh, keep possession. But I sometimes felt that, come on Sander, you can do even more. We had this kind of mantra, we said that the most important person for you Sander is yourself. It's not me, it's not your coach, it's not the teammates, the, ref the referee, it's you. So you can, you can influence your own performance more than I can. Then I had to look for a first team, like in high division, and then I chose to play for Wolleringa, which my granddad played for when, uh, uh, yeah, some years before I was born. I remember when, just before I went to, to the Wolleringa club, it was, uh, was several clubs looking for him, looking at him. Um, and they were not 100% uh, sure. And, and I remember I said to them that uh, I worked with a lot of players, and I, I never say that I'm sure, but this time I've never been more sure. <laughs> So I had one year where I was in the starting 11. So I played in the, in the highest league there and then Genk uh, bought me January 2017 and then I played in Genk Belgium for three years. He learned a lot, I think, when he was in Genk for three years. He came to Belgium as a young player. He hadn't been outside Norway on his own before, uh, a new world. And then he moved to Sheffield, and now it's so much more professional. Well, before Sheffield, we were talking about uh, other teams as well that I uh, was interested, but uh, I remember uh, he told me that, uh, yeah, he was going to Sheffield. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's, uh, that's incredible, bro. So, and uh, yeah, so yeah, we were just talking about it because it was like, yeah, I haven't told anyone yet, but I, t I tell you now I'm going to Sheffield. He's come a longer way now when he's in Premier League, so I'm happy for that, him. Sheffield United have also broken their transfer record with the arrival of Sander Berger. You know, the Premier League is probably the, the best league in the world and with the most <laughs> attention around it, so it was great for me and of course it's been for me too to come to Sheffield, but it was more about how much they wanted me rather than the money, but of course that's just a thing on the side which makes you feel like, okay, this will be my home and I'm, this is, uh, I, they will really uh, want to use me. And it went quite fast when the first interest came up, like, but uh, I spoke with him and, you know, he, how much he admired me and uh, how, what he saw in me, what he wanted me to bring to this team. And he told me about, like, the city and the club in general and their journey, you know, from League One and all the way back there. Well, we will see a record signing today. The visitors who brought Sander Berger with them. Their Norwegian international just picked up from Genk and he is in the starting 11. I can see the first game, he was... <laughs> i never seen that guy so tired. <laughs> and uh, he called me after the game as well and was like, yeah, the tempo here uh, contra, you know, playing in Belgium, that was a huge difference. So he was like, well, I need to work now, bro. <laughs> I need to be, I need to run more and run faster and all that. 
What advice did your new manager give you before you went out to play today? Go out and play my game and just work hard, uh, get composure on the ball and just play from my strengths. And uh, I knew I had a very strong team be beside me and of course they're backing me up the whole game and then it's easy to push and push. But it was day and night to come from the Belgium League, get one session and play in the Premier League because this is uh, intensive football. I must thank, to be honest, all of the lads, you know, uh, it's a special championship. I was a little bit like skeptical in the beginning when coming here, like how will they react and how will it be, you know, here I'm coming, young young guy. Yeah, we spend some time, I get to, to be like the third wheel at many, <laughs> many of the lads' home, you know, going there to get a meal uh, and uh, that's nice. The pandemic uh, came and it played a major role for a uh, hundred days. He was sort of locked up, but he came back strongly. Hey, Mom. Hello. How have you been? Every day. He, he is very good. He FaceTime us every day. And tomorrow it's going to be a win. I hope so. I hope so. Win it. It's been, uh, it's been kind of sad that you can't get over to watch the games like I would want to do, but uh, this is a... Uh, life situation and we got to handle this as appropriately as possible so obviously we FaceTime as we always do talk a lot on the phone and it was strange going into lockdown uh, not knowing really anybody or the city uh, but it also helped me reflect on the first month uh, how it went and then I learned a lot from that and improved my physical abilities and of course came back with a positive and happy mindset and then since then I haven't really been looking back I mean, he's living out the boyhood dream. I think every kid in Norway uh, feels like growing up and I want to be a part of, as I do, and I'm living the dream through him, obviously. I do recall instantly the game against Tottenham. He scored once and he had a nice assist and they won. Berger takes it on and he gets the goal. Neat, precise, and to the point, Sander Berger's first goal in Premier League. He was very happy after the goal at Anfield. Uh, uh, a penalty is always pressure and uh, it feels good to put it away. Uh, it's a long time ago since I actually uh, kicked a penalty in a game. Normally it's just in a shootout, I get a, I'm allowed to go, <laughs> to go and uh, have a shot. It was like, yeah, did you see my goal, bro? <laughs> Yeah, of course. Nice goal. When he went to England, I watched every Sheffield United game where I can see Sandra. So I really like to watch Sandra. I remember, remember when Sheffield United played Man, Man City uh, after 70 minutes, I think it was. Uh, he has the situation uh, on the side when he received the ball and dribbled past one and then the second one came to, to the line and, and made a nice pass outside. Should be a big scoring opportunity, they missed, but uh, that was a kind of situation when uh, in his earlier days he would have played maybe an easy pass before he, he took the challenge. A lot of games we felt we should have gotten a result and deserved a result, but uh, that's how it is right now and then we have to look ourselves in the mirror and see where we can improve and that's what we work on every day at the training ground. We're a group of 25, 30 players with the staff, you know, everybody comes there, you know, and they're bleeding for the jersey, you know, it's like the, there's something special about it and it's like people really care about the club.